Hello once again, I'm Cosmic, and today we're going to be taking a look at the kickstarted CRPG Pillars of Eternity, which was developed by Obsidian Entertainment and published by Paradox Interactive. PoE was successfully funded to the tune of just under $4 million, with over 73,000 backers. Indeed, the classic role-playing game has made a huge resurgence in recent years using the crowdfunding platforms, and PoE was not only shaping up to be the spiritual successor to games like Baldur's Gate, but it was one one of the most highly anticipated CRPGs in recent memory. Now your adventure in the game takes place in the region of the world known as Direwood, which has a rich history of wars, gods and magic. A recent curse has befallen the land and the people are being born without souls. These are known as the Hollowborn. And that's pretty much all I'm going to tell you as you really do need to experience the world and the story for yourself. So let's start where every epic adventure starts. No, not with rats in a basement, but with character creation. Unlike many games where your character creation lacks depth and it kind of feels like an afterthought in many games, Pillars is meaningful. You're spoiled for choice with six races to choose from and with many appearance options after that and 11 classes. Not only this, but you also have to choose what region of the world your character hails from, which can have an effect on dialogue options and their background occupation, which affects their skills. The depth of character creation alone shows how carefully crafted Pillars is. It is refreshing to have a character creation system that feels like I can actually create something unique. While my first game I chose a human fighter, I do have a certain soft spot for my godlike cipher. Pillars of Eternity's controls harken back to a bygone era of role-playing games. People who are familiar with the Baldur's Gate series will feel right at home with the controls. The hood is designed nicely, and it's easy to navigate with both the mouse and the keyboard. It's classic in its look, but it remains intuitive and does not detract from what's going on elsewhere on the screen. While the default controls do work well, everything is rebindable so you can tailor the controls to how you want to play, which is important given the combat system. For those who have not played many party-based top-down RPGs, Pillars Combat could be looked upon to be messy and simple, however it is deceptively so. Pillars employs a real-time combat system that can be paused, slowed down and sped up. There's no AI tactic system for your party members in play in this game, you are in control of all of them, and they won't do anything unless you direct them to. Pausing regularly is required to issue orders to all your party members, and while easy enemies will fall under the might of your team's normal attacks, you will have to employ strategies and tactics in tougher fights or you will go down fast. Formations play a big part of combat, and positioning your characters is key to keeping them alive. Making sure that melee focused characters take the brunt of the frontline action while casters stay at the back and rogues flank the enemy is crucial to winning engagements. Ranged classes cannot take many close combat hits, which brings me to the health and damage system. Characters essentially have two bars in combat, the health bar and the endurance, and in a fight endurance will be hit first. Once that reaches zero a character will become knocked out. The lower your endurance, the more damage to your actual health you will actually take, and should your health reach zero, your character will die. If it's your player character that dies, then the game is over. If it's one of your party members, then say your goodbyes, because there's no resurrection in this game, it's permadeath. Like formations and positioning, tactics plays an also key role in the combat, but to have good tactics, you need to learn the classes that you have in your party. Many classes have spells and various abilities to choose from. These spells come in the form of support abilities or offensive abilities, and usually each class will have a mix of both. I love the variety of classes in Pillars, and their rule system gives you a lot of flexibility to customise each one of your party members as you see fit. As you level up in the game, you'll be spoiled for choice, and it really comes down to how you want to tailor your characters, how you want to play, and ultimately it does give you a little leeway in terms of it doesn't punish you too much in combat if you stray from the traditional path of how to level up a specific class. Characters' main attributes such as might and their skills such as mechanics will not only come into play in combat and looting, but also in dialogue and scripted events. The dialogue in the game is mostly just text, but major conversations are voice acted. 
Pillars focuses on choices and has a faction reputation system, so what you say and the outcomes of your conversations can affect your reputation as well as having consequences for quests. For example, earning a bad reputation with a faction will not allow you basically to access their respective quest lines. The dialogue in the game is wonderfully written and is packed with dry humour. There are many options to choose from in each conversation, even choices that are unlocked depending on what your stats are, what your character's background is, and what you've done in the game thus far. Scripted events are essentially text-based events that usually involve a task of some kind. Your character's skills, such as athletics, will come into play, as will the equipment that you have in your inventory. An example of a scripted event is coming across a gorge that you cannot get across. But should you have a grapple hook in your inventory and a high enough athletic skill, then you'll have the option to try and get across. These events often unlock new areas or shortcuts and are always worth checking out when you can. Now after so much combat and travelling, your characters will become fatigued. Fatigue debuffs your character's stats and the more fatigued they become, the higher the stats will be affected. To get rid of fatigue, you'll have to rest either by using a camping supply or by staying at an inn. Resting is the only way in the game to regain lost health. And while you won't have to rest every 10 minutes, be prepared to be well stocked on camping supplies when heading into a dungeon. The game's inventory system is a traditional system and there's nothing that people won't have seen in there before. You have your character's inventory and then you have your staff should your character's inventories become full. The game is also has a limited crafting system where you can create potions and magic scrolls from ingredients that you collect out in the world. There's a weapon and armor enchanting system and the, that works very very similar to the crafting system. It's just a case of collecting the right ingredients and then simply applying the enchantment that you want from the inventory screen. One of the great features of Pillars is the ability to create an adventurer that is level correct at will to join your party. While the story companions you pick up are fantastically written, all with great personalities and stories, you may require a different class in your party for a certain fight. You can then hire an adventurer from an inn or from a stronghold permanently to join you and you can just basically go into character creation, create the character they want and they will be level ready and ready to go. I love that Pillars gives you the tools to solve any problems that you run into in terms of your party makeup. By no means does this make it easy, but it allows you to give yourself a fighting chance should you create a party that is severely lacking in a certain area. Another major part of the game is the strongholds mechanic, by which at a certain point in the game you'll own your own fortress. This fortress introduces a base building mechanic that allows you to upgrade your base to house various buildings that have different uses. Building these facilities requires money and game time to complete, so you can go off adventuring while you wait. Your fortress will also be attacked regularly by enemy forces, so you will be required to defend your keep. Eventually, you'll gain access to missions that you can send those characters who are not directly in your party on to gain money, experience and items. Strongholds will eventually gain you access to some really great side quests that will eat up your time but be well worth it. Speaking of the quests, there's plenty to be had in terms of both main and side missions. Pillars is not short of things to be doing. In every area, you'll encounter events and people that have problems to get involved in. After all, this is an RPG and everybody is a nosy busybody in an RPG. Pillars manages to, to avoid the questing pitfalls of the genre with no traditional fetch questing for pointless things or killing small animals to prove your worth. The game's quests really make you feel like a character who is respected and important. Even the side quests recognise that you're a warrior or a wizard or someone with talents to be used on important matters rather than frivolous things. There are also quite a few memorable quests in the game, which is again something that other games fail to do well, as I can recall countless RPGs that while I have enjoyed them, thinking back, I can't remember a specific quest or a specific storyline event that made me sit there and go, wow, that was really cool. Whereas Pillars does do that in certain quests. Pillars of Eternity's world is deep, and it has some truly wonderful lore. I could talk all day about it, but I don't want to spoil anything. I will say that the history of this fantasy universe is not only well written, but it ticks all the right boxes for me in terms of both immersion and believability as far as fantasy universes go. 
The story itself is involving and interesting. The majority of the game is really well written. Both the written parts and the voice acted sections are a joy to read and listen to. Personally, I'm a huge RPG player and a lore geek and I love all the little bits of information and the books that I can collect in the game so I can read about a certain area or events. Pillars really says to the interests of both mainstream players who just want to get on with the story and the obsessive lore collectors like myself. I think what first struck me about the game when I first started was the art and the overall aesthetic. It goes to show you that by using a fixed isometric view with the technology of today, it can produce some beautiful backgrounds and landscapes. Everything in the game looks polished and detailed, from the stonework of the buildings to the flowing of the rivers, it's absolutely breathtaking. The use of lighting looks good, particularly during the night cycle, and it's all very visually appealing. Because Obsidian opted for 2D static backgrounds, it has allowed them to put in a higher amount of scenery detail than it would otherwise have been possible. That said, they did certainly run the risk of the art style going wrong and looking dated, but thankfully everything looks phenomenal from the weather effects like fog to spell effects in combat. The soundtrack of the game is really nicely produced and accompanies the rest of the game well. There's a really nice soundtrack underneath and it kind of reminds me a little bit of Lord of the Rings at points. There were quite a few sound bugs however in the game, where it would get stuck on repeating a menu sound closing, or the game's music would stutter while panning the camera around the map, and this was actually fairly regular. Like I mentioned, the voice acting in the game was really well produced and sounded authentic, which is very important in an RPG, and it added to the game's immersion and overall quality. Overall, what's unique about Pillars is that it gives me the loving nostalgia of a Baldur's Gate game, but it feels fresh and modern all at the same time. Obsidian have crafted a gem of a game, and I certainly would love to see a sequel in the coming years. It's a must have if you're an RPG fan and I'm so pleased that they have produced a great game and that goes to show that isometric RPGs cannot just be made but they can be made to a ridiculously high standard. Obsidian have spent most of their time working on other people's IPs and it's so rewarding to see them create something of their own and have it be truly fantastic. In my opinion, this game is a must for your collection this year. I see th good things for this new IP in the future, and I can ha I c just literally cannot recommend this game enough. It is worth every penny. Thanks for watching, everyone. Please do subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Um, if you enjoy my work overall, please head over to my Patreon and support me there, and follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you next time.